a lot of older couples in China actually sleep in separate rooms. And for their children, younger children, they actually worry. Does that mean their parents don't love each other anymore, right? But for those older couples themselves, my parents too, they are very happy sleeping in different room and they still do a lot of activities during the day. But as children, we sometimes wonder, mm, is that a good thing or not? So these, it's really interesting that the stigma we have and the belief system about what the marital bed is really begins early, even among our children who might assume that, oh my goodness, if my parents sleep apart, that has to mean something negative about the relationship. Whereas in the parents, or simply focused on getting good sleep because they know that that's probably the best thing they can do for their relationship. But this is actually true across cultures and something I dive really deep into in my book, understanding both the history of the meaning of the marital bed and how it's changed over time. And in doing so, my goal is really to help couples start to have a conversation about the importance of sleep in the context of their relationship first. And then second, it's about how do we get there? That is, how do we find the best sleeping strategy that's going to work for us as a couple to maximize our sleep so we can be the best partners we can be? And that might look different from couple to couple. One couple may really cherish and benefit from sleeping together but that doesn't mean it's going to work for every couple. And another couple, for instance, where one partner snores, if if the other partner who's while sleeping with a snore is not getting good sleep, that's probably not the best thing for their sleep or their relationship. So other strategies, including potentially sleeping apart, sleeping in separate beds or separate bedrooms might be the best strategy for them. And I really wanna give couples permission to know that there isn't a one size fits all that's going to work for everyone. But prioritizing sleep is really critical for the quality of your relationship. And then of course, talking to your children about that, you know, how mom and dad sleep together or don't sleep together really says nothing about the quality of our relationship. It's really about us doing what's best for our sleep, which is really important for our well being. I really love that to really help people understand, right? You don't have to sleep together. It's really, you need to look into your own relationship status, each uh, partner's sleep issues and to decide how, what's the sleep arrangement basically within the family. And it's not directly related to sleep uh, relationship quality. Absolutely. And when you think about it this way, Proportionally speaking, if we spend about a third of our lives asleep, that is a major proportion of our coupled existence. So why should we be making decisions about how we sleep together or you know, how we share that third of our lives with our partner or not? Why should we be basing that on society's prescription for what we should be doing? That's a huge part of your life as a couple that decision should really be made at the couple level. Just like couples make all sorts of other decisions about their daytime behaviors and how they choose to relate as a couple based on their intrinsic values as individuals and as couples. So too, you know, the decision, decision about sleep is a very intimate and personal decision that is best made amongst two partners, not, you know, societally prescribed, um, you know, beliefs and ideas that a, a couple feels that they need to follow, even if it doesn't quite jive with their own experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you mentioned that, remind me, you know, for a lot of couples, it's easy to discuss which restaurant you want to go to, what food you want to eat, right? But anything related to bedroom, including sleep and sex and all the other things, it's so hard to have a conversation. Absolutely. And to be honest with you, we probably have sort of more instruction and more experience in talking about sex in the bedroom than we do about sleep. 
which I'm here to tell you takes up a lot more time in bed <laughs> than sex does. And yet think about it. You know, we're in, you know, premarital therapy, couples counseling, um, online dating apps. Does, you know, the notion of sleep and your sleep preferences, your sleep-wake behaviors, whether you're a morning person or an evening person, where does that ever come up in the context of relationships? It is this critical like critically neglected area that makes such a difference in not only our individual lives and health and well-being, but also in terms of how we behave as a partner. So again, one of my goals is to start elevating this conversation so it's not taboo to talk about, you know, what happens in the bedroom other than sex, that is sleep, um, and help couples to realize, wow, there's lots of ways to do this and to support ourselves um, and in our unique relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely.